Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today I am taking a look at Bot War 2nd Edition. Um, this is a 80s inspired cartoon themed uh, miniature skirmish game from Trader's Galaxy uh, in its 2nd edition and I'm super excited about it. So um, there's a two player star set which is what I'll be demonstrating today. Um, there's a huge expansion of like various factions and add-ons all inspired by um, just sort of like the fun campiness of 80s cartoons uh, and yeah it's it features basically wacky robots crazy cars uh, you know evil organizations the king of Atlantis rising to take over the planet like everything you could possibly think of um, that we've sat down on Saturday morning and watched uh, is inspiration for this game uh, and I'm pretty stoked about it it's it's gonna be really neat uh, the two factions featured in the star set are the Atlanteans so basically the the bot servants of King Gills who's like the evil king of Atlantis who's risen up to destroy the earth and take it over from the democracy um, and the Valiants who are robotic sort of like protectors enigmatic protectors that join forces with the democracy um, to to battle back the Atlanticans in like the first war and the time period of the game the game is set basically in between that first war that the Atlanticans and the democracy win and kind of like drive the or sorry the, the democracy and the, uh, the valiants win and drive back um, the bots of King Gills and the the Atlanticans uh, and his resurgence to like try and take over the world and all the other evil and good factions that are flying over the planet uh, it's really neat because you can kind of pick models as you like them and then have an allied matrix there's 10 missions in the book uh, to play and the game looks like it's going to be sort of like simple to play hard to master so i'm really excited about it i'll show you the painted models i'll show you the contents of the star set and we'll get this underway so here it is all painted up the two-player starter set for bot war second edition it comes in a handy little um oh geez i don't know what this is eight by twelve <laughs> eight by twelve box um with book shelving so that if you want to stock it in your store you can see the sides as well uh and you get two playable factions a level 11 miniatures of the atlanticans who are sort of the evil uh, minions of king gills his bot allies you get four combiners nami Aegon, nebulous and thermal um and they're combiners in that they have uh, the ability to form up with a core combiner which is a, a fifth model that's uh, an expansion for this or fight on their own and if they combine up with the fifth um combiner they become this giant thing called leviathan so they're uh they're a robot basically that can become the arms and legs and torso of another robot which i think is super cool and there's full rules for that in the in the, the actual core rules of the game and then you get moray and stingray who are um air support uh bots which means that they can like um briefly fly and like ignore line of sight and stuff like that and so uh, it's about 58 points on this side. You can see it's uh, 10, 17, 27, 39, 49, uh, 58 points. But there are upgrades, little like companions you can add to people, uh, usually human companions um, or like alien companions that can upgrade the points. So you can just take a human slave <laughs> with these. They basically, the merfolk don't like the humans and are trying to take back the planet from them. Um, and so they kidnap humans, use them as slaves, and allows you to reroll defense die because they're like fixing you or op like putting you back together and stuff. And then you get the Valiants, five Valiant models. You get General Duke, who's the leader of the Valiants, um, and a huge robot. He's the biggest robot, actually, in the box. Um, although the uh, the two fly guys are also on um, 50 mil bases. But he's 25 points all by himself. And then his uh, his friends, Angel, Top Star, Wolf, and Aegis, all have like different kinds of roles. Um, but they all have a ram attack role, which means they can fight in melee pretty well. Um, and they're 60 points on the nose and upgrades for them. Uh, but you can see here that they, um, they've all got kind of like a unique role as opposed to these folks who are kind of almost like squads. They're all sort of like character driven instead. So Wolf's like an infiltration specialist with scout and disorientate. Uh, Aegis has Obscure. He's a, he's like a shield dude who can like help out other people with cover. And then, um, the top star has Efficient, Lucky, and Obscure. And then, um, Angel has Sharpshooter. She's good at shooting and stuff. And then, uh, Big General Duke, he's uh, got huge stats. And he's also got a Ram Attack, um, like all the, um, the Valiants do. And Inspiring Presence and Pure Purpose for his special rules. Um, I'll go over the Anatomy of a Card in a minute after I go through the rest of the contents of the box. You get your Attack Dice. Uh, the game does use proprietary dice, but they're they're not hard if you just want to use D6 to replicate if you want to try the game out. Um, and it basically comes down to uh, one success. Uh, there's, a, there's basically a blank, a one misses, two, three is one success, uh, four, five is two successes, and a six is a critical for three. And then you're doing opposed dice with shield dice, and it's basically an opposed dice pool game where you're rolling your attack value dice on purple dice, and then your opponent's rolling their shield dice. Certain effects can add criticals. Criticals are just expanded attack dice with no miss state, and then two ones, two twos, and two threes. So a lot more damage. You get a d6 for randomizing certain occurrences, and of course, um, scenario purposes. And then you get energy cubes, and the energy cubes 
cubes um, are both your uh, sort of like your resource for activating models. Uh, so like your action costs for, for things are based on this and also um, a total pool that you can assign to people based on their own energy that they produce. So you'll have an energy pool basically that your models create and then you distribute over the course of the turn in order to do things. You get your rule book, second edition rule book. It's a complete core rules along with even like the ally matrices, uh, rules for vehicles and infantry and stuff uh, and a basic background. It's the year 1985 and the democracy has led to planet Earth <laughs> until the invasion of King Gills and the Atlanticans. Um, it gives you an overview of all the factions and then an ally matrix because you can actually use different factions together. So for instance, the democracy can fight with um, both uh, the um, like beast bots and the um, valiants. It's so, like the valiants, anyone who's green can ally with them and they count as being in the same army. And there's also the um, trash bots who will be an uneasy ally for them and they basically operate in a separate energy pool um, but you can take them as part of your army as well. So it's it's almost like playing two armies at the same time and use an uneasy ally. Uh, and the bad guys can do it too. So the bad guys have things like, um, where is it? It's all by symbols so I'm, I'm messing up the names probably a little bit. Uh, where are they? Ah, find me the symbols. This is an A5 scale rule book so I can't just flatten it out. <laughs> where is it? Here we go. Uh, no, oh, I did it again. Actually, the worst. There we go. Um, so, like the deceivers and the infestors can both ally with each other, but they don't like each other that much. The beast lords, the democracy, and of course the um, the what call it? The valiants can ally, and the snake core can ally with people like the Atlanticans, the overlords, the evil space aliens, and the trashers um, can ally uneasily with um, the valiants and deceivers. Set up a game so we can go through the core rules. There are ten missions in here. We're gonna play the first one, um, and the first one is uh, scenario one: quest for energy. Uh, the game's played on a 3x3 board, and it's going to last 8 turns. Let's set up the table, and we'll get this underway. I mentioned you got a sweet tape measure, too, in the box. <laughs> so you get a full-on, like, locking tape measure for measuring inches, because the game's in inches. Alright, so here I'm set up for a beginner's game using the starter set of Bot War. Now, what do you need to play? Well, simply enough, you need what's in the box. So you need your tape measure, um, all your energy cubes, your cards, your miniatures. Um, I'm stealing some energy cubes for the objective markers for this mission, um, as well as a 3x3 playing surface. I'm using this great mat from uh, gamemat.eu, uh, your rule book. Uh, I'm using some dice for damage counters, although you could use probably a dry erase marker and just mark it on the cards. And some terrain, some appropriate, uh, this is like an energy mining station that both the Atlanticans and the um, Valiants are fighting over. Uh, and that's pretty much it. They need to pick your armies. So using that ally matrix or picking from a single faction. In this case, we have single factions, Atlanticans and Valiants. Uh, you play, usually a standard game is going to be 80 points. Now, in this case, the star set provides us with 58 and 60. So I'll use an upgrade to make this 60 as well, which is a human slave. We'll put it on Moray. I'll put it on Stingray, actually. He's the most expensive model. Actually, Thermal is the most expensive model. But he looks more leaderly, so <laughs> we'll use him. Um, and he's a, ah, you know what, he's a bully. Maybe we do a Moray instead. He's cheaper, but he's a bully. Let's do it on Moray. So we'll give him a human slave, make him 11 points. Um, and then uh, he'll, be a, he'll be a fighty dude uh, and able to reroll one of his defense dice. Your scenario, so we're going to be doing um, Quest for the Energy. It's eight turns long, so I got a big um, 3D printed D12 here so I can keep track of turns. Uh, and a couple of big D6s for keeping track of victory points. Um, and we're going to set up terrain. Uh, each player rolls a d6. The player with the highest uh, rolls to choose a side. The other player automatically has the opposite side. Models deployed such uh, with their bases on their own board edge in ascending strategy order. So, uh, strategy rating order. That's a stat everyone has. I'll go through the anatomy of a card in a second. Uh, special rules. Each player has two energy cube objective markers, so 25 mil bases, which some energy cubes on them. Um, after all trains in place, but before deployment, players alternate placing the objectives, starting with the side that has the model with the lowest strategy ratings. Now, this is all impassable terrain, uh, which means models can't move through it um, unless they have a special ability like air support, where they can just ignore terrain when they move, but they can't end in it. Um, and so we can't put the objectives on the impassable terrain within eight of any table edge or within six of another. So basically, before we know what sides everyone's deploying on, these four have to be placed. As I'm playing both sides, the Let's Play, which is learning right now, I'm just going to try and spread them out fairly evenly in a way that looks cool. So we'll go with, there's a pile over here. Uh, maybe the, this generator's been spitting some out. Uh, this one over here's been spitting some out. And then this one over here's been spitting some out. So I was finding all the rules here. They're not within six of each other or eight of a table edge. Looks pretty good. Um, and now we'll roll off each playing player rolling a d6 to see. Uh, so for the Atlanticans, they get a three. And for the Valiants, they get a one. So the Atlanticans can choose side. There's two piles of energy over here. Um, so they might as well deploy on this side. 
and then over here will be the Valiants. Control the energy at the start of the turn, determine if any models are within two of any energy sources. If they are, and there's no enemy models within two, add an energy cube to their overall pool for that power-up phase. Uh, and add a one victory point as a tally. Continue this until the game ends uh, or for eight turns. Uh, and then the mission objective is produce the most energy cubes, victory points from the energy sources. The winner of the force has collected the most victory points over the course of the game, and less one force entirely eliminated, in which case the force eliminates the op entire opposing force as the winner. So if you get really behind on energy cubes, you can try and table your opponent to win. Example map. So let's do the anatomy of a card real quick um, before we go through and we'll do the game turn as we play the game. Uh, so we'll use General Duke as an example. So you've got your faction symbol, so obviously in this case it's Valiance, your name, because you're unique. Your point value, so 25 in this case. Then your strategy rating, you'll notice that Duke's is really high. So that's why when you deploy, you deploy an ascending strategy rating. So the lower your strategy rating, the sort of like more tactically inflexible you are. And that means he's always going to deploy last, right? Whereas in this case, Top Star's strategy rating is only four. He'll deploy first. Then you have your movement, how many inches you move, so seven, your ranged attack ability, so four, your close attack ability, which is four, so how many dice you rolls, and his shield ability, which is four. So he's he's pretty beefy, fours across the board. Then you have your damage, he can take ten points of damage before he dies, uh, and then his special rule, so his superpower, which is ram attack, basically he gets a bonus... Um, critical die when he makes a charge move uh, and he has two key special rules inspiring presence and pure of purpose inspiring presence means he's a walking reroll basically anyone who can see general duke once per turn can reroll any die of their choice which is kind of cool uh, and then pure of purpose means he's immune to the mind control special rule because there's things Ugh, that can that can take your mind, like men talk the mind taker. Um, and then finally you have your energy, and your energy is how many cubes you produce and how many you can be assigned. So he's got three, which means he can use three per turn, and he puts three in the pool for actions. Remaining Valiants are all basically descending in cost. Wolf's the most expensive. He's uh, strategy rating five, but he's movement seven, range combat three, uh, close um, attack two, and then shooting ability of, th or sorry, shield ability of three, two. So he's pretty tough. And he's got six damage boxes. He's also got ram attack, he's a scout, and he disorientates. That's cool in that it means he ignores the normal deployment and can go anywhere on the board as long as he's at a line of sight. And if he's in line of sight, he has to be 11 inches away from any enemy models. Um, and then disorientate is he can trade his range attack uh, for like a jamming ability. And every model, friend or foe within 10 of him, excluding himself, loses a shield die on any shield rolls they have to make. So he's a cool debuff, like a walking debuff, um, that can just show up in their enemy half of the board. Uh, and then Aegis's thing is he can obscure, just like Topstar can. He'll see he's way, way, way squishier. He's only got four health boxes. And he's strategy rating six, but he's movement seven, range combat two, and close one. So you can see the dice go down pretty hard. He's only got two shields. So obscure is basically a passive ability. It means that uh, Aegis gains an additional shield die on any range attacks that, uh, that attack him, but not in melee. So he's got three shields against um, range attacks, which is pretty cool. Same with Topstar. Uh, now Angel is 9 points, she's strategy rating 7, movement 7, range attack 3, close 2, shields 3, and has 5 damage boxes, and she's a sharpshooter. Um, and that's a, another another um, passability that works all the time. She can just reroll a range attack die uh, every turn. And then Top Star is um, also pretty fast, with strategy rating of 4, it means that uh, they'll deploy pretty much, um, or they'll activate pretty much um, first every turn uh, in this faction. And then movement seven as well. Range combat a three, good shooter, because he's got double pistols. Uh, but only close attack one. Two shields, but with obscure it means three against uh, range attacks. And then uh, efficient and lucky. Efficient means the first um, activation they make every round is free. Uh, doesn't cost any energy cubes. And then lucky means that they can um, reroll a single die, sorry, up to two um, shield dice when they're making a shield. And with obscure that means that it's three shield dice with two potential rerolls. So it's pretty awesome. Um, and now all these models have ram attack. It's a super ability. Super abilities still have an energy cost. They're basically an action these folks can do. They get to add plus three movement, and if they make a, a combat action in the same turn, they get plus additional, like I said, critical die. So normally when you make a charge deck, you move and then attack, you get a, a critical die. These guys will all get two uh, when they make a close attack. So this plus whatever their close attack uh, skill is. Makes them pretty dangerous in melee and pretty fast too, because they're all moving ten inches. You imagine they're they're um, they're basically like doing their like roller skate ability, moving faster into melee. Now with sides picked and our uh, models sort of like described, um, I should probably do the anatomy of a card over here too. They're they're pretty much they're they're you know, they have a much bigger energy pool first of all because there's more models. So there's 14 energy cubes as opposed to the um, ten that the valiants have. 
uh, which means that you're you're dealing with a lot more actions on this side. But individually, the models aren't that tough. Nami's pretty tough at 10 points, uh, and strategy rating 7, movement 7. They're all pretty much the same speed, 7 and 8's first thing ran more, right? Those are their, like, jet planes. Um, decent stats, range combat 3 on everybody, close attack 2 on everybody, the blue and orange guys, and 2 and 3 shields. Uh, Nami with the shield actually has an additional shield. Um, they've all got ram attack as well and combine. Combine isn't relevant for this mission because we don't have the core combiner model that would initiate the combine, so they're just fighting off on their own. Ram attack is the same as the Valiants. Notice that they only have four damage boxes each though, so there's lots of them, but they can't take that much damage versus the um, this five, five and six. Uh, there's only two models with four damage boxes in the Valiants. They have a lot more health. Um, and then they have class mud warrior, which is just a it's a, a sort of a tag thing um, for certain abilities in the the army. So you have to worry about that for the purpose of this game. Um, but then they've got some other keywords you haven't seen, like pugilist uh, and combat shield. Pugilist just lets them reroll one of their close attack dice each round, and then combat shield means that when Nami is attacked, he swaps one of his red shield dice for a critical die. The magnetic disruption gun's pretty gross on Nebulous and Thermal. It means at short range, which is 10 inches or less, there's unlimited range for long range. Um, they swap all of their range combat dice for critical dice, which means no miss state. Uh, so with range 3, that's 3 black dice as opposed to the 3 purple dice. Uh, and then Sharpshooter is the same as on um, Angel. It means you can reroll one ranged attack dice per turn. Moray Special Rule Bully means that when he targets someone with Obscure in melee, he can reroll a die. He's just, he's just, I guess, the hidey folks are the people that hide are small. He likes to, to just beat up on. And then Stingray uh, with Blast means that when targeting a model with a ranged attack, all their models within two inches of that target model uh, take a single unblockable point of damage. So lots of chip damage because there's just explosions flying everywhere. And then they both have air support as their super ability, which costs two as well. Cool means they jetpack, they triple their movement ability for one turn, so they can move 24 inches, but they can only make range attacks and no melee attacks, which means no bullying. But that's pretty awesome with Stingray, so for two energy, Stingray can go 24 inches, not in an impassable terrain, and then fire with blast. Now we deploy, now whenever you need to deploy, um, or even activate models in this game, you go by strategy rating ascending, so it's lowest to highest. So low actually makes you faster, so Stingray is four in this faction, and over here is top start four. Whenever there's a tie, the Valiants go first. So top is gonna deploy, uh, they're forced to deploy on this edge, and he'll deploy over here. And it's Stingray. Stingray's just going to go wherever he wants, really, because he can go far. For the fives, it looks like it's going to be Moray and then um, Wolf, and that means Wolf will break the ties. He's a Valiant, but he always deploys last because of his scout ability, uh, which means that he'll go down after everybody else. So that breaks the tie, and we put it over to Moray, and he'll hang out over here, because that's a Moray. Uh, everyone else over here is seven, so for sixes, it's going to be Aegis. Uh, and then Angel's gonna go before the other sevens because Angel is a Valiant and they break the tie. So we're gonna go, I think over here for Aegis. Grab some Energon. It'll be Angel, as she's got the Valiant tag, meaning she'll go first. Where does she wanna go? I feel like going over here is gonna be cool. We have to get to the middle. Like we don't have a choice here. It's all the little guys, all the Mud Warriors. They're gonna go. Get ready to shoot and hold terrain. Two melee bros are gonna get themselves charging up. It's 10 for General Duke. He's a big boy. Uh, he's just gonna go in the middle with all his friends because he wants them to be able to see him. Wolf is last, so anywhere on the table out of line of sight or not within 11. So out of line of sight, we can go back here and that feels like a good spot to be. Grab some objectives that way, hopefully, and do some shooting and disrupt some folks. So it's ready to start turn one. So the turn sequence is start a turn. So that phase of the game is used to calculate victory points. So if I was within two of the energy cubes, I would then grab one for my pool um, in the power phase and also score a VP. Then power phase, each model needs energy cubes. So we assign um, the from the total pool that we have energy cubes by model. Um, and then activation phase, we go in ascending strategy order and um, when we perform an activation, we pay the listed cost of the activation. Uh, by removing the energy cubes associated with it. And there's four main ones, move, range attack, close attack, and super. Two activations per turn, so you don't want to just stack all your energy cubes on somebody because they only do two actions. But in any order and in any combination. So you could move and then move again, you could do two range attacks, you could move and then do a range attack, however you want to do it. So there's a bit of planning during this phase, um, and we got to do some assigning. My sanity, I'm switching the cards <laughs> for this, and we have to add up our energy pool. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for the Valiants. Uh, that's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, and 6 is 14 for the um, Atlanticans. 
primary actions, which are move, close attack, range attack, um, uh, are all one single energy cube to perform. So that's pretty simple. Uh, and then finally, the um, the super abilities all cost usually two, some cost more, uh, but the the two basically. Um, is a pretty standard one for all the ones we have here. So for both air support and ram attack, it's only going to cost two. You only do two things at a time. So if you wanted to, for instance, do ram attack um, plus a close attack, you'd need to assign three energy cubes to somebody. And it does mean that models will sometimes not have any energy cubes um, and not get to do anything. What's cool is though, is Aegis, not Aegis, um, Topstar, even only gives you one, one's free every round. So I can just not assign to him and have him do a single action. As I'm playing both sides here, I'm not gonna stress out about it too much, I just wanna try and use all the abilities. So we're gonna start off by giving, I think, two to Duke, we just wanna get moving. Uh, we're gonna give two, one to Wolf, mm, two to Wolf. We'll give two to Angel, we'll give two, Two to Aegis, and we'll give one to Top Star. Yeah, and we'll give three to Duke actually that way. So we're kind of assigning their actual energy costs, but that feels like it's gonna let me do stuff because I can do a ram attack and a move with Duke. Um, and that means I could go 10, 17 inches within this turn, which is pretty fast. Then we're gonna assign over here, um, I think we wanna put three on both Moray and Stingray, which will slow down the other gang a little bit, but I'm not super worried about that. It means that they can use their air support ability if they want uh, and still be able to fire afterwards. And a 24 inch move is pretty amazing. Then I think we're gonna give, we've got, with six down we have eight left, which means we can give everybody else two because we're basically, Nebulous and Thermal are creating the extra ones for everybody. And so with all of our energy assigned, we have to start activating. So start with the lowest strategy rating, which again is going to be a tie between Top Star and uh, Stingray. Uh, we'll activate, and Top Star's got two energy, uh, of which one is free. So we'll start with a move action, uh, and go. Oh, I could have done that. Ah, no, we'll just go two. So we're going to go with a move action and go seven. So using my handy eight-inch measuring gauge here, we'll go up to here. Uh, we'll go up to here actually. Go this way, seven. And then our second, and that's gonna cost us free, basically, because we're efficient, and then we'll spend the second one to move again. And just send over here. Within two. So like a securing the objective. Uh, and that's gonna mean that it's time for Stingray to go with three cubes. Stingray's gonna start off by, because we might as well, doing a sweet, sweet fly. Uh, so superpower using air support. Stingray can then move uh, 24 inches. So this three times. So one, two, and then if you'd like three, but we won't go all the way three, we're just gonna go hang out over here and be in cover. And to take a shot with blast, because why not? Um, so that's gonna be one more energy cube to do. And because it's not within uh, short, not within 10, it'll remove a die. So range combat three goes down to range combat two, two purple dice. Um, and he might as well target someone fairly easy to hit. So actually there is no one fairly easy to hit here. It's gonna be either, if he wants to use the blast ability, he's gonna to have to go after uh, General Duke, who's shield four and really hard to hurt, but it will automatically put a point of damage on Angel with blast. Ooh, that might not actually work. It's only if he damages the target. So who's got the lowest shields? Mm, Aegis has obscure and so does, ugh, really everybody. <laughs> I guess he target Angel, try and put a point of uh, damage on Duke, might as well. So it's two dice, and see how many strikes you get. It's gonna be three total, and then Duke's gonna roll his four shield dice, because he's a monster, and block uh, six. So yeah, Duke Duke just laughs, laughs in robot. Fives now, fives is going to be both Moray, and I believe Ghost, yep, and Ghost go first, which means, whoa, we've got some, we got some doll redos here. Do we wanna activate our thing? I don't think we need to activate our thing yet. I think we just need to shoot within 10. We definitely are. So we get to use our full dice, which for him is going to be three. And you can also spend energy to boost. So if, if instead of doing two shots on three dice, I could do one shot on four die and add a boost. Feels like doing it twice is more, more valuable. Now, if uh, Moray was more than 50% obscured, he'd get a black die on his shield roll there. And unfortunately he isn't. He chose to be 50% uh, percent obscured from um, Top Star over there instead. So he's gonna get to roll three shield dice to the three um, range stack dice on Wolf. And let's see how Wolf does. So spending his first energy, three attack dice is four to three shield dice is three. So we'll take a point of damage. Uh, he can take 
six normally, so he's gonna go down to five. We'll just use a little dice to track the damage. He's gonna do it again. Second range attack, second action. So three range attack dice. Oh, only one hit. Does he block any? He blocks four and he's fine. And we're on to Moray now, and Moray's gonna do pretty much the same thing and fly. Uh, he can go 24. And 24 is gonna take him over here, I think. One, two, he could go three and go to here. Now, Wolf would get to go first, but he can contest this objective, which feels like a good idea early on. And then he can shoot. To shoot, he's got three range attack dice. He'll shoot into Wolf. Wolf's only got three shield dice, so he can do some damage here. He gets four hits, but Wolf blocks five and he's fine. So all sevens for the little guys over here, the Atlanticans. Uh, we do have a six in Aegis and he'll get to go first. He's got two power dice, so he's gonna move, I think. He's gonna put himself up his movement seven. So up to here, get himself within 10. And then second die, he's just gonna blast on uh, Moray. Move, second one to blast. Uh, and he's got two range combat dice, so not super damagey. But he gets four, and then three block dice on Moray. He blocks three, takes one, down to five. Both the Atlanticans getting damaged. It's at sevens, so that means Angel's gonna go first because the Valiants break the tie, and then it's gonna be all these little Atlanticans. Two dice, she has a range sharpshooter, so if she gets herself within 10, which is not a bad idea, going up here, she'll be within 10, she'll take a shot into Moray. Stack three with her second die, and she can reroll one with sharpshooter. Mm, might as well reroll one of these ones. Still gets one, so four total successes. Against three shield dice. Oh, he blocks one, he takes three more. And that's gonna take him down to two, almost dead. All of these little guys get to go in any order that they want. Um, they've all got two, so they can all move twice. And it feels like that's what they're gonna do, uh, or move and shoot. So we'll start with the shooty ones. Uh, first one's gonna move seven. It won't quite get him into uh, range of this energy cube. So he'll move again as a second one and just go get himself into cover. Nebulous, he's done, and we'll do thermal. He'll do much the same thing, or does he just want to get up and shoot? He really wants to get up and shoot. He's gonna do that. He's gonna move once to seven, which will put him here. And he's gonna take a shot in the top star, I think. No, shot in the angel. Just wanna move, second one's a shot in the angel. Now he's not in close range, he doesn't get his magnetic disruption, but he's a sharpshooter, so he can reroll a die. So three dice will go to two, but he gets four hits. Uh oh, she's got three shields. She only blocks two, she takes two, down to three left. Ugh. And the last two, I think they're just gonna move and move again. So both of them with two energy cubes, they can move 14. So moving seven, and then threading to move seven. Now Wolf's gonna go first, but there's two of these guys. Uh, we can move into there actually to be in cover. And this one's gonna go, and go seven, and then seven again. Get behind cover over here. All the energy spent there, so it's just General Duke going at strategy of hitting 10. He's got three actions. I feel like he might just kill whatever he touches, but he only gets two actions. He could shoot, but he's gonna have to move first. I think he spends two to make a ram attack. Not that he'll actually get into melee, but he'll get to go 10 inches that way. So eight. And then two more up to here. And then he's just gonna blam on uh, Oh More. I should've used Inspiring Presence to reroll one of her defense dice. Would I would it have gotten better? No, <laughs> never mind. So you can use it on reroll though, because it's any friendly model. So um, he'll have four attack dice with a reroll into More. And ugh, gets five successes. Do you want to reroll one? I don't even, even bother. Uh, and then he's got his oh wait, that's the wrong dice. Ah shoot, idiot. <laughs> Those are shields. He gets, now he wants to reroll six, seven, and then Moray's got three defense, two, so there's a five, five health points. Moray has exploded. Oh, he can reroll a shield die though, not that it would have mattered. Nope, because <laughs> of his human slave, he's dead. So he's super toast, and that frees up the energy cube that are being held by the Valiants. Every model having activated, so First Blood goes to the Valiants, having killed Moray with General Duke, but um, we've got a big spike of damage on Angel, and we're way down in the start phase. So we gotta start at turn two. So first the turn marker changes to two, then victory conditions are assigned, so it's a bonus energy cube this turn, going to the Valiants, and one VP, and then, Three bonus energy cubes going to 
uh, the um, Atlanticans and three VPs. So they're gonna be down one, but it's gonna be two, four, six, 12, uh, 15. They actually have more energy this turn. Uh, so it's gonna be 12 and three more, 15 because they held those spots. 11 this turn for the Valiants, five, 10, 11, uh, because they hold one. So putting three on Stingray, three on Nami and Aegon, and then two on Nebulos and three on Thermal. Trying to get some extra blasts going here. Uh, and then over to the uh, the, the legendary um, Valiants. <laughs> we'll put three on General Duke, we'll put two on Aegis, two on Wolf, two on Angel, and then we want to do two on Topstar? No, we'll put a fourth one on General Duke. No, a third one on Wolf actually, and one on Topstar. I'll put two on Topstar, what the heck, why not? So going first, once again, it's gonna be charge rating four for Stingray, and he took four energy, uh, so he could boost two big shots. Because if he can hit uh, Aegis, uh, then Aegis is going to, even with Obscure, Aegis, if he just do point of damage, he'll do a uh, point of damage to both Top Star and Angel. Sweet Blast Rule. So first two uh, to make a range attack and also boost it, meaning he's gonna get, is he within 10? No. Uh, he's just gonna have three dice. It's pretty sweet if he can do this. Three dice, he gets four successes. Um, and with Obscure, Aegis is gonna have three shield dice. But if a point of damage goes through, his friends get hurt too. No, he blocks it all. Good job, Aegis, you're living up to your name. And he'll spend his last two to do it again. Long range, three dice. Oh, five this time. Well done. And Stingray, oh no! Does four damage and just straight up kills Aegis and does a point to both Top Star and to um, Angel. And does none of General Duke, he's not close enough. So he's just dead, because he beefed it. Oh, he could reroll one of those. He is gonna reroll one of those because uh, General Duke's there. Okay, so he blocks three, he only takes two. Oof. Okay, he's alive, <laughs> but he's half health down to two. And then Aegis is gonna go down to two as well. So Angel's gonna go down to two, and then Top Star has four and goes down to three because that blast landed. That was a big one. That could have been a TSN turning point right there. Uh, and we're into other strategy rating four, which is. Oh, Top Star, who would have gone first, actually? Uh, so he would have gone first, actually, which means that we're going to just take the damage off him because he would have moved away to be able to shoot uh, and get towards the objective. So he's gonna go take a move action with his first one and be within 10. Yeah, and he's gonna shoot this guy. I don't think he's gonna kill him, but he's gonna not take that point of blast damage, at least. Uh, it's a free move, and then you'll do a boosted shot. So it's going to be four dice into uh, Stingray. Does he get it? Uh, he, oh my god, he gets seven? He's in cover, so he gets a block critical die added to his blocking. And block six. So he only takes one. I was lucky. He goes down to four. Fours have gone, so it's on to the fives. Now he's dead, which means I think it's wolf time. Stingray having gone... Ugh, all the sevens will go before General Duke, but it doesn't mean that Aegis and Angel will go first. So we could activate, engage with a ranged attack, disorient, which we will. There's a white bead here to mark that it's active. It means models within 10, and it also includes my model, uh, are going to suffer minus one red die, which is going to suck. But he's then gonna shoot this guy. Or one minus one shield die, yeah. Second uh, energy, he'll shoot Nami, and he's gonna have three dice. Uh, to Nami's uh, shield. He's got, what is it? Uh, combat shield. We're getting two dice, but one of them gets swapped for a black die, which is pretty cool, and we'll see what happens. So he's gonna get mm, three, not the best, not the worst. And then going down to two dice, but one's a critical die. Three as well, and he blocks it. The sixes will be Aegis. Uh, nobody else on this side, because it's all seven for the Atlanticans. So I just can do some shooting here. I feel like we just want to shoot twice into this guy. Two dice, he's gonna go down to range combat one though. Ugh. Ugh. Do you wanna move first? I feel like we need to. We need to get, we need to get somewhere good. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go move over to here. So we can see Stingray, and then we're gonna shoot him because we're gonna reduce his shields right now. Two dice, it's gonna get five, because why not, versus two red dice on Stingray. Two, he's gonna take three damage, go down to one. Well done. 
Almost killed him. Then it's all the Atlanticans get to go, basically, because they're all sevens. Um, hmm, can we get... So who wants to go first? I feel like we go with uh, Nebulous. He's going to use his first action just to walk and try and stay within two. So he'll stay within two. Does he get within ten? Oh, it's super close. I don't think he does, though. My handy bot war tape measure, I noticed that he does just maintain two of the energy and also smash into Aegis. So he's going to shoot now. Short range of that magnetic disruption gun means he's range combat three black dice. Ugh. Six damage. All right, well, he's two shields, but he's got obscure. And he blocks one. So he just gets nuked. Just do it again. We're going to go with uh, Thermal, and he's going to walk his seven. Heading up to here. Making a shot into do I do General Duke. I just do General Duke. We could also just straight up kill Top Star. And that would remove scoring. And I think we do that instead. So it's gonna be three dice with sharpshooter this time. And it's off star. And does five. When we roll to one, might as well there's no failure state, and it could get better. So it goes to seven. Oh no. So Top Star's got three shield dice. He blocks five and he lives! Down to two. Oh my god, that was a shocker. Should have boosted that. Because why not? Oh, he can never add black dice though. No, he misses. Three dice for a reason. <laughs> and so did Nebulous, actually. Uh, not that it mattered, he just vaporized Aegis. Uh, and then Aegon and Nami both have it as well. And they're going to do some, some fighting, I think. Uh, I should have moved him slightly like this just to leave a gap. So we're going to start with Aegon. So we can try out our superpower. We're going to do the um, Ram attack. Yes. That means he can move 10. So he's going to go three, six, nine, over to here. Uh, that's going to give him two extra block dice on the melee attack he's about to make. So he's close to, but then two block dice. And Pugilist, he can reroll one of these. Uh, so might as well reroll this one. And get two. So it's going to be seven total. He's on Wolf. How does he do? Blocks two. Look, he's on the down five. He's got one left. Just lived. We're going to do the same thing with Nami. Nami's going to go two for a ram attack and go, go just full, full distance. Three, six, nine. Go slam in over here. Melee attack. So he's close to, but he gets plus two to his attack dice for ram attack and charging. And oh, those are shield dice, Ash. <laughs> Grab the purple dice. Oh my god, ten? Ugh, Top Star's got two, because uh, he's in melee, and blocks two, takes eight damage, and just gets liquefied. Things are not looking great for the Valiants! Uh, all of the Atlanticans have gone now. They gave one of their objectives, but they've also pushed onto the um, enemy one. It's just the... Oh, Angel should have gone first. Damn it, Ash. Uh, Angel would have, I guess, shot back here. Moved up and shot. Mm, actually, she probably would have moved up and shot over here. Because I would have tried to finish off a Stingray. So I'm moving to here and then taking a shot. Nice. Uh, five. She could reroll one of these. She might as well try. Yep, yeah, goes to seven. Block it with three shield dice. Blocks two. No, he dies. So Stingray's dead. Game state restored. And it's just General Duke. Can he, can he finish it off? We've got multiple dead folks. <laughs> Uh, but he does have three die or three power to do stuff with. He needs to take a spot back. He probably can. He could also probably kill almost anyone he wants to touch. Hmm. He gets a gajillion dice if he charges. And I think that's what we have to do this turn. We're going to charge. So he's going to use two for ram attack. He's going to ram attack into here. Staying within two of the objective. And try and kill this guy. We got four dice plus two black dice for ram attack and charging. So that's going to be a lot of strike dice. And he gets eh, not that much. Six, seven, eight. Tosser also only had one shield dice. I just remembered because I am. Ugh, and he only had two, which means he died even worse. So uh, we're looking for um, two shield dice, one of which is going to be black because he's got a combat shield. And he blocks four of the eight and just dies because he only has four. Nami, good job, big bot. Well, it's on to round three. So scoring. 
I don't think we're making a turn eight, but the um, Valiants hold two and go to three now, and also gain two energy. So the energy pool is gonna go to nine. So they've lost two bots. Uh, and we'll score one in the Atlanticans and go to four, almost tied it up. And they'll get one extra energy cube this turn. Uh, so they're gonna go two, nine as well. They're all strategy rating seven here, which means that Angel, Wolf are gonna go before everybody else. And if they can do, if they can do the damage, it's gonna be great. But these thermal guns are absolutely bananas. <laughs> Well, Angel's gonna take four. We're gonna give three to General Duke and two to Wolf. So we're going by strategy rating, which means it's gonna be Wolf first. Now Wolf really needs to disengage uh, from Aegon and that means at least bashing him out of the way. So disengage, if he does damage but doesn't remove him, he can push him back uh, and then make his remaining actions as normal. So he'll do one to attack, try and hit. He's got only two close assault dice, or so close attack dice. And he gets two. We could reroll if we want with the big boss. We're going to. Oh, it goes to one. And then it's three dice to defend. So actually two shield dice on Aegon. He blocks four though. With the second action, can he do it? I'm rolling the wrong dice. And there's four, uh, which Aegon rolls two dice and gets three. So I just roll them in the wrong order. Uh, and that means he'll take one damage, get down to three, and get driven back. Well, that wasn't the order I wanted to do those things in because I wanted him to be able to get out of the way, but we might be able to do what we need to do now with Angel, if Angel can can kill everything she sees. <laughs> she does truly need to kill everything she sees. So she's got four dice specifically because she's strategy rating seven, same as the remaining Atlanticans, but she's a Valiant, so she goes first. She's gonna have to boost two shots. She'll make a range attack. I think we need to try and kill Aegon first. And 10, uh, which means she's gonna be able to shoot with her three dice, uh, boosted to four. Oh, work, and she'll try again. Boosted to four. Oh my god, that totally, totally scuppers her. So trying to shoot Aegon again. And she does six this time. Bit of a swing. Two shield dice back, blocks four, and doesn't kill him. Down to one. All the Atlanticans go. Well, that's convenient. Might as well start with Aegon. Uh, he's just gonna, I guess he could shoot or he could charge. He shoots at three. But if he charges, he's gonna have two plus two black dice. So I think we just do that. We're gonna do a ram attack, and then fight. He has to do one damage to kill Wolf here. I don't think he kills the boss, but I don't, oh, he could do that too though. If that's the case, we start over here. We're gonna try and kill the boss, because the boss can't hold an objective. Can't hold an objective. So I think we're actually gonna start over here, and we're gonna do a, uh, a sweet, sweet attack from Thermal. He'll just boost a shot, and that, Gives us three, with three critical because we're in close range, into General Duke. Ugh, it's sharpshooter, so you can roll one. And he's gonna get eight total. General Duke, you got four dice to block. What do you block? You block six, you might take two. Oh my God. Uh, so he goes from 10 to eight. And then with his last die, Thermal's just gonna do it again. Use it this time though, so just three critical dice. Because his magnetic destruction gun. Oh, he does seven. Can the big bot do it again? He blocks four. So uh, he's gonna go down to three, uh, down from three to five left. It all comes down to Aegon, who's gonna do a big charge. He's gonna go two to charge over here because he'll hold it if he does. And then one to fight. He's only got one health left. He has two block dice and a bonus die though. And Pugilist means he can reroll a close combat die. Let's well reroll that one. Make it worse. Nope, stay the same. So it's six total. I don't, he, it, it's very unlikely he kills General Duke at this point. Nope, blocks three and goes down to two. All right, well, hmm. Because he didn't kill him. And that's important because he's disengaged now for shooting. He's also away from the objective. Well, what do you want to do, Nebulous? You can shoot twice. You have three dice. You're holding two zones now and you could potentially kill Angel. I think you just try and kill Angel. We're boosting the first shot, that's gonna mean a regular and three of these from the magnetic disruption gun. Oh my God, you do 11? I don't think she's walking away from this. She has, Angel's got three shield dice and blocks four, but takes seven and explodes. And he might as well Hail Mary into Wolf and see if you can kill him, because they're all gonna go before him. Two dice uh, into Wolf, and Wolf is gonna get cover, which means Wolf's got a whole bunch of dice. But you never know what happens. He gets three, and Wolf gets 
five and he's five. No big bots, you didn't die. And that means you need to take all of your revenge right now. <laughs> uh, I think, what's the easy thing to do here? I think we just gun everyone down if we can. So we're just gonna take a shot into this little, ah, oh, but then we don't hold the objective. We need to hold an objective this turn. We need to move and then shoot, I think. Cause then it, tie, it doesn't tie it up, but it's close. If we just table them, we win anyway. So I think we just shoot twice. We don't worry about the energy this turn. We just shoot twice. So we're gonna shoot into Aegon. Four dice, cause Duke is a meanie. <laughs> For nine, uh, Aegon has two defense dice and blocks two and is liquefied. He's just gonna boost the dice into thermal and try and kill him with his last two, boosting a shot. So adding up to five dice now. I got two health left. I think I die if I don't do this. Oh, not enough. That's only five. Aegon's got two defense dice, two shield dice, sorry. He blocks two and takes three, he's alive. Two, one. Oh man, woof, rough. Well, that's gonna take us to turn four. And as we count up, we've got one each. So it's gonna go to five for the Atlanticans and four, no, actually nothing, down to three. The, the Atlant we're gonna have to kill this turn. It's not gonna work. Oof, well, uh, so one extra here, which will take them to seven, because they have a bananas amount of energy that these guys spit out. Hey, <laughs> seriously, Nebulas and Thermal are great. Nothing, it's only five for the Valiants to assign. So the Valiants will give, I guess, we really need you to kill him, Wolf. You should be able to do it at that range. You only got two shield dice. So we'll give you three and give you two. Really need to hold a zone right now. And that means, yeah, you're gonna go first because you're strategy rating five and then both the Atlanticans are less. So Wolf, you just gotta make this happen, buddy, because Thermal's gonna kill him if you don't. So you're gonna take a move and go stand over here. And then you are going to blast. If you move over to here, you'll be obscured then. You're gonna take some shots. You guys within 10, you get six total. Ooh, if he's only got two shields, there's no way for him to block all this. Ah, sorry, he could. If he got super lucky, no, he's done. Thermal's dead. So then it's just, yeah, it's just Nebulous. He's got three dice, or three energy, sorry. No, four energy, because, you know. Oh no, he got, yeah, he got four energy, that's right. Because it was seven total. So he's just gonna trade up, and hope he kills Duke. Walk to here. Zone, and go for the short range murder on Duke, because if he kills him, I think, I think this game's gonna be real, real tight. Um, <laughs> and then he's got his boost. He'll have extra energy left, but there's nothing you do, but he's just gonna boost a shot. So he'll boost the um, range attack for four dice. One purple and three black is in short range. And the Duke. Yeah, does nine damage. Oh, Dukey boy, I don't think you're gonna live this. You block two and you're dead. Kills General Duke with his thermal gun, or his um, magnetic gun. And that's round. Oh man, so gonna go to six on turn five, because Duke's dead. And four over here. Four to six for the Valiants. But Wolf gets to go first. He only has one hit point left though. Three dice. And you know what that means? He could murder charge and that's what he's gonna do. Wait, time to roll out. You're gonna go three, six, nine, ten. Charge around the corner. And if we table, we win. Not that I'm playing outside or not, but <laughs> this is this is good guys versus bad guys here. So two bonus dice. He's got two close dice. This is his last attack, last action. He's trying to kill. Uh, Nebulous here for the win. He gets uh, six total. He could do it. Two shield dice. If he blocks two or less, that's the game. Otherwise, I think he's gonna get toasted. He blocks three. He only takes three damage. He's alive. Down to one. Well, uh, does he want to drive him back? No, he wants to keep him in melee. So let's see if he gets killed. energy because he earned one last round. He produces three himself. And that means he can make two boosted melee swings, which is good because he's only uh, close assault two. So three, so the first one does three damage. Uh, three shield dice on Wolf though. Blocks it all. And then the second one, four damage. Come on, Wolf, what you got? Oh, just three, and that's game. Takes one damage and kills Wolf, the last of the Valiants. So with one box left, uh, at the start of the next turn, they're tabled, so they lose the Valiants too. But on turn six, um, the uh, Atlantic ones will go to seven. Uh, and it'll be seven for the end of the game. Both on scenario and on uh, 
the uh, the tabling criteria. There is our first look at Bot War 2nd Edition. So you go, first look at Bot War from Traders Galaxy. Now, Anthony, the author and creator of Bot War, is going to do a um, thank you for you guys watching the video uh, with a 15% off discount code that'll be available for a week from when this goes off. So you have seven days basically to use it. It'll be in the video description below. Um, and Mike from Epic Duck Studios has been painting up some investors. Inf infectors, infest, I'm gonna get that wrong. Um, <laughs> but some more bad guy robots for us to try the game out with, and he'll probably um, ally in some of my Atlanticans as well to give it a go. So big thanks for watching, we'll see you for more Let's Plays in the future, and hopefully more Bot War. Till next time, I'm Ash, have a game. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.